Hi there. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you how we can work out the area trapped between a curve, say y equals some function of x, the y-axis and two lines y equals a and y equals b. Now it can be shown that that area shaded here is equal to the integral of x with respect to y going between the limits y equals a and y equals b. Now I'm giving you this equation here without any proof. All I want to do is just show you how we can use it. And to demonstrate this, I've got this example here where we've got to find the area bounded by the curve y equals x cubed, the y-axis and the lines y equals minus 1 and y equals 8. So to do it, what I'd want to do first of all is just make a sketch of that graph. Okay, so we'll take our two axes, x-axis and y-axis, and the curve y equals x cubed is going to look, say, something like this, up through the origin and then up like that. Okay, so this is the curve then y equals x cubed. And the area that we're interested in is the area trapped between the lines y equals minus 1. Let's say that's y equals minus 1. And let's say that's y equals 8. It's not drawn to scale. This here would be the origin. Let's just mark that in as the origin there. So the area we're interested in is this one that I've just shaded. Now what you'll notice is that some of this area is on the right hand side of the y-axis and the other part is on the left hand side of the y-axis. And when this happens, the parts on the right hand side always come out as positive if we apply this method here. But the ones on the left, if we did the integral, would always be negative. It's a bit like the questions, if you've done them, where we have the area bounded by a curve and the x-axis, when it's below the x-axis, it always comes out negative. And so we've got to take a lot of care over questions like this. So I'll demonstrate this through this uh, video. But first of all, let's take a look at this typical area on the right-hand side. We'll call this A, okay? And then we'll look at this area here, which I'll call B, the one on the left-hand side of the y-axis. This is the more awkward one. So we need to split this up into two integrals. First of all, we'll do a going between 0 and 8. So the area then for a would be equal to, by the formula, it would be the integral going between the limits of y equaling 0 to y equaling 8. And then it will be x integrated with respect to y. Now we've got to take care here because we're integrating with respect to y and we've got x. So what we need to do is make x the subject in our equation here. And so from this, if we take the cube root to both sides, x will equal the cube root of y, which written as an index would be y to the power one third. So we've got to integrate y to the power third going from y equals zero then to y equals eight, integrated with respect to y. So we've got our function here in terms of y. And if we integrate this in the usual way, we have one to the power, so that's gonna be y to the power four thirds, and then we divide by that new power, 4 thirds. And that's going to be then between the limits of y going from 0 to 8. So just border this off, OK? And carrying on then, we've got the area of A is going to equal well, dividing by 4 thirds, if we times top and bottom by 3, that's going to give us 3 quarters times y to the power of 4 thirds. And I'm going to bring the 3 quarters out in front of the bracket being a constant, okay? Just makes it easier to work with. 
but you don't have to do that it's up to you so the limits then are between 0 and 8 so if I substitute then in first of all 8 what we've got then is 8 to the power 4 thirds which in other words is the cube root of 8 and then we power that to the power 4 and then from this we subtract what we do when we take the cube root of 0 which is 0 and then we do that to the power 4 well that's still going to be 0 so I'll just write that in a 0 there so the cube root of 8 is 2 and 2 to the power 4 is 16 and 3 quarters of 16 well that comes to 12 so that area for A is 12 and I'll put in units squared okay units squared now when it comes to working out the area of B it's this that we've got to be careful about I'm not going to write area of B I'm just going to just have a subtitle there that we're looking at B and you'll see why because if we were to integrate then between the lower limit minus 1 y equaling minus 1 to y equaling 0 of x which we now know is y to the power third okay y to the power third with respect to y then we've seen that this integral comes out to 3 quarters times y to the power 4 thirds it's only the limits that are going to change so I'll just write here that this is the same as 3 quarters times y to the power 4 thirds but the limits then are between minus 1 and 0 and if we put 0 in first of all we're going to have 3 quarters of the cube root of 0 all to the power 4 which is 0 then from this we subtract what we get when we put minus 1 through well that's going to be the cube root of minus 1 and that's going to be raised to the power 4 so we've got 0 minus now the cube root of minus 1 is minus 1 and minus 1 all to the power 4 is 1 so we end up with minus 1 here minus 1 times 3 quarters is minus 3 quarters so you can see we get a negative value when we're working out areas on the left of the y-axis so that's where you've got to take care and that's the reason why we must split this up into various parts when a curve crosses the y-axis so that means that therefore the area of B okay so say area B well that must be the positive value here so that's going to be three quarters of a unit squared so when it comes to working out the shaded area so we'll just put that in first of all the shaded area well that's going to be the sum of the two areas of A and B 12 plus 3 quarters of a square unit so that's going to be 12 and 3 quarter unit squared okay so I hope that's given you an idea then on how we go about working out the area bounded by a curve say y equals some function of x the y-axis and the lines y equals a and y equals b it's given by this formula but we've got to take care then when we've got areas on either side of the y-axis